Hi everyone, in today's video, I'm going to talk about one of the most anticipated, one of the most hyped characters that has been added to the game so far, which is the God Close Sayer. Now, I had really high expectations of him, uh, and I'm going to start off by telling you kind of my own experience after playing him for like a day or two, uh, which is that he's absolutely crazy in boss battle. He is able to outperform kind of my second DPS, which is normally going to be Sheena. He can single-handedly do about like three times more damage than Sheena. And normally, if I look at my uh, you know boss damage chart, like he alone covers about like sixty percent of all of the damage output. So he's absolutely crazy in terms of boss battles in PVE in story maps. He is. Uh, also very good because of his utility, of the fact he's able to interrupt certain opening skills, and also he's just a very flexible character. So like uh, once you get to the stages where you need to fill in like three teams, uh, or maybe even later on if you do ever need to fill in four teams, etc., he is always going to be there, and you can quite easily shift him around different teams depending on composition. So he is solid in PVE. He's not like game breaking. He's not like um. How good, like normally when I think of PvE, the best character for story progression is always going to be Sagittarius Sayer and Virgo Shun combo because they pretty much just like delete anyone. Um, God Call Sayer is definitely not at that level, uh, so he's solid, but he's not like a massive, you know, it's not someone that you make a team around, let's say, in uh, PvE because he can't really, like, he, he cannot solo carry in story progression. So, so he's just good, but nothing too crazy about that. Um, PvP is the one that kind of disappoints me a bit, to be honest. Um, maybe because I had too high expectations for Go Close Sayer, uh, and that's why maybe he just didn't quite perform to the level I expected. I think I still need some time to test out various different strategies with him in PvP, so which is why um, in today's video I'm going to focus very much just talking about the various different skills and what they do and how you can take advantage of them or maybe certain things that you want to take note of. Uh, however, I won't talk too much about actual formations or any tactics etc purely because I think um, I still need some time to actually test out this character to make sure uh, I actually tell you guys exactly what is the best way to utilize him. So yeah, so that's essentially going to be the agenda for this video today. I'll be talking about his clothes, his constellation, his skill. i also talk about a liar, etc. Um, and basically what are the main things that you should watch out for. But in the future, I will definitely create a more in-depth video about how to actually use him to his best potential in PvP scenarios. Oh, and also, of course, at the end of this video there, um, I'll post some pictures of how to clear of his trial stages, etc. Alright, um, let's start off with his uh, ultimate. Basically, his ultimate is hitting a target 8 times, a single target 8 times, each time dealing 100% attack scaling, and also the last hit has 15% of the target's max HP. Now this is absolutely crazy because eight times a hundred that's eight hundred damage scaling. This is the by far the highest damage scaling you will be able to see for a single target. So this is absolutely crazy. On top of that, you also have an extra damage equal to fifteen percent of max HP. So this is just this is really gonna hurt. Uh, it can potentially one shot certain characters, and this is kind of what allows him to do ridiculous amount well this is one of the reasons why he do ridiculous amount of damage in boss battle there's other factors to it as well um now there's one thing with the translation here it doesn't say who this person uh, who this ultimate is going to target but i have checked against other languages and what this actually is going to target is the enemy with the highest attack so this is kind of one big differentiator between him and sagittarius Aurus, who's the other main high single target damage dealer. Uh, Sagittarius Aura is always going to release his ultimate against the enemy directly opposite him or in the same position as him, whereas Sagitt um, God Close Sayer have this homie effect. So regardless where you place him, he is always going to uh, make sure his attacks hits the enemy with the highest attack and therefore hits the enemy's DPS. And that's kind of really good, um, partially because of his other skill, which is this um, opening skill, which is kind of like an opening interruption effect. And because of this opening interruption effect, you normally want to place him strategically 
in a position where you may want to break the enemy's opening attack. However, at the same time, you may still want your damage to be aimed at your enemy's DPS. And that's why I think that like, this skill is actually, this ultimate is actually designed really nicely because this way you can place or position your Goku say however you want in order to interrupt the enemy's opening attacks. However, you are still going to make sure that uh, your actual main damage output is still going towards the enemy's uh, most dangerous character, their DPS, etc. So that's why I really like the design of this ultimate. Alright, so now let's move on to his actual opening uh, skill. So basically, he is going to force the enemy in the same position with him, so the one directly opens him into a duel. Within that duel, uh, the enemy is going to get normal attacks at 50% higher speed. However, Goku Seiya is going to get uh, increased attack speed of 100%. So basically, you have a slightly bigger advantage over your opponent in the duel. So most of the time, you should be coming out of the duel winning. Most of the time, and I'll talk about why. Um, the other aspect is that within this duel, you are both yourself and also the target are immune to any kind of exterior damage or control effects um this is kind of the reason why i found this a bit um rng based i guess in some sense in pvp and that's kind of why it fell my expectation is previously i expected this to do quite a bit of damage towards anyone who's in the duel however even though both Sayer and the enemy is immune to any control or damage during the duel they are not actually immune to any buffs or debuffs, etc. And a lot of time right now in the meta, you have God Close Sayer, oh sorry, God Close Asena, who's able to put up a shield for everyone. And that's gonna make kind of the actual impact of this duel a lot less because what happens is that uh, I, for example, have tested God Close Sayer up against Poseidon. Half of the time, if I am triggering God Close Asena's shield, then I'm literally doing like zero damage to Poseidon, which is really annoying. Like within the duel, I'm literally doing zero damage. So just absolutely useless, even though Goku say I should have already broke uh, or interrupted Poseidon's opening bounce effect, I should be doing some damage, but because the shell from Asena is just too good, I'm just not doing anything at all. However, the other 50% of the time, if I didn't trigger Goku's Asena's shield, then I can easily knock down like 50% or 60% of Poseidon's uh, uh, HP. And that's actually going to give you a really good advantage because Poseidon is the most vulnerable at the start of the battle, so you want to kill him off quick. And that's kind of why, you know, this is really, with the meta right now, I definitely see Goku's Asena being counter a lot and a lot by some of the meta character. So even though this duel effect should normally be quite impactful, um, I just don't really see much play of it in the meta right now. So even though this sounds really good on paper, uh, don't think too much of it actually in practice. Uh, I would normally only use this as a way to interrupt certain opening attacks that I really don't want them to go ahead. For example, like if the enemy has a Sagittarius Sayer, and for whatever reason, I don't have a uh, God Close Asena because she's in a different team where I don't have Surplus Shield, then I probably want to use my God Close Sayer to actually interrupt your uh, Sagittarius Sayer's opening attack. Or maybe to interrupt, let's say, Sea Dragon Cannon's uh, opening control, that kind of thing. So don't think too much of using this for the damage output, but think of more to use it for the interruption effect. I guess that's probably the best way to put it. Uh, something else I've noticed with this skill is that because you are entering uh, a duel with another enemy and, and during that time you guys are only doing normal attack what and this duel lasts for six seconds uh, this basically have two effects one is that you can delay the enemy's uh you can delay the enemy's looping skills uh, because normally what happens is the looping skill only kick off after a certain time. So let's say if I'm up against Sagittarius Aurorus, Sagittarius Aurorus normally uh, release his burning flame arrow about 4 or 5 seconds into the battle. However, he will not be able to release that in the duel because what happens is that within the first 6 seconds, you guys are forced to use normal attack. So you can potentially use this as a way to delay certain really, really good 
looping skills. You know, one of the best looping skills I can think of would be, for example, Iris Moo, his crystal wall. You can actually use this as a way to delay, to make sure Iris Moo does not put up any crystal wall till at least after six seconds, etc. So you can potentially also use this doom mechanic that way. However, it's also a bit of a double-edged sword because what happens is that even though you are not able to use any skill attack, the enemy is actually atta uh, attacking a lot faster because of that increased attacking speed. Sorry, um, because of this in oops, where did it go? Because of this increased attacking speed. So what that actually means is that they are going to charge up their Cosmo a lot faster and therefore release their ultimate faster. And so basically, you get into a bit of a weird situation where if you do enter the duel with someone. Yes, you're going to delay their looping skill, but at the same time, they're going to release their ultimate faster. So that, once again, is potentially something you need to consider when positioning him. Um, so once again, let's take Aris Mu as an example. You can potentially delay his crystal wall release time, but at the same time, you're going to bring forward when he releases ultimate, which can then blind off your back row, which your back row could also includes uh, God Close Sayer and that could be quite bad for you. So it is a bit of a double-edged sword and that's why, you know, once again I said, I think I need to spend a lot more time testing out God Close Sayer to kind of know what is the best way to utilize him because you may think, you know, for example, it makes sense to position him against Aris Moon in order to delay Crystal War, but at the same time, that may actually end up hurting yourself because then you have been blinded, etc. Those are all of the things that I still need to test out, and that's why I think like God Call Sayed certainly have a really high uh, ceiling if you're able to use him properly, but there are just loads of different quirks that, you know, it's probably worse for us to actually test out in practice to see exactly what is the best way to play him. So yeah, so definitely watch out uh, for one of my future video where uh, after all those testing, I'll probably come up with the various different, you know, opponents that you should try to do against, or what is the different ways that you should pet up Goku or Seiya, you know, to take advantage of his skills, etc. So yeah, so watch out for that video in the future. Uh, it, will, it will be a good one, I guarantee. Um, Alright, so the third one, this is also a really good skill. Um, all of his skills are really good, to be honest. Uh, this one, basically, what happens is that for every three seconds, uh, there's a 50% chance where he can activate this trigger effect, which basically allow him to hit all of the enemies, dealing attack, which is equal to 100% attack, and also he will be getting rid of all of the debuff of him. So this is really useful uh, in a few ways. So one, basically every single, every three seconds, you have a 50% chance to purify all of the debuff. So that could be good in, you know, against poison teams, in, against those of like debuff teams, etc. So that by itself is already quite good. But what makes him really strong is actually the fact that he is able to then do uh, AOE damage, which is uh, only 100% attack, so don't don't take it for a, a amount of attack he's able to do. But the main thing that you want to look out for here is that it have all of the bonus effect for normal attack. And also, I forgot to mention his um ultimate also benefit all of the bonus effect for normal attack. And what this is actually going to make it really interesting is the alliance choices for him, because what you can actually equip him on with is things like Demon Rose, where basically it says like all of your normal attack poison the target, or you can also replace this with the likes of this one, which have the bleed effect, or this one, which have the flame effect, or this one, which have the slow effect. There are also a few other ones, for example, this one, uh, you can also reduce the enemy's attack when you're dealing damage. There's also this one, the Fist of Light, which is for each normal or skill attack. You can also remove buff as well. And this is basically what's going to make um, Goku say a really versatile in terms of formation. Because what happens is that you can actually customize the layer you put on him in order to activate certain effects against your enemy's entire team. And that's what makes it crazy. Like, for example, if I personally play a poison team right now. I put the poison rose liar on uh, Go Close Air. What's that gonna mean is that every three seconds I have a fifty percent chance of poisoning the enemy's entire team. 
that is going to be massive for presenting with Aphrodite, etc. So that this is basically just showing you how strong or versatile he can be with this trigger skill. So this is definitely, I think it's probably not something that people would think too much of, but it's certainly a very good one. Oh, and also um, another really good combo with this is on the artifact. Uh, one of the artifacts, I think it's like the Golden Tofu. Uh, at one of the higher levels, I, I don't think I've reached that level yet, but I think at level 3 or maybe level 5, what happens is that every single normal attack have the ability to stun the enemy. Right? I think it's a really low probability, of only like 20% or 30% probability, but you're able to stun the enemy. So once again, you can potentially place him with the artifact as well. And when you are triggering your own um, trigger attack to actually deal out normal attack, across the enemy's entire team, you also have a really low chance of stunning the entire team. So that's also really nice. Or maybe even if you don't stun the whole team, uh, at least one of the enemies will be stunned. So that's also a very good interruption. Kind of. So there basically there's like loads of different strategy you can come up with this trigger skill. And that's why I think like, definitely bear that in mind. Uh, you can place potentially in a god club, say in a poison team, in a flame team, in a bleed team. Like, there's so many different possibilities of how you can play him. Uh, and that's why I think this skill is also very good uh lastly we have another passive this is the other reason why he deal ridiculously high amount of damage in boss battle and why he gets so much stronger as the battle goes on uh which is basically that every single time when uh Every single one of his attack is going to increase his attack by 10%. Uh, it's also going to increase his attacking speed by 5%. Oh, sorry, at, at the highest level, it's actually each one's going to increase by 15% attack and 5% speed. But basically, like if you stack it up uh, 20 times, which is how many times you are able to stack up, you can get 300% increase in attack and 100% increase in attacking speed. And this is going to make his, like, damage output in boss battle ridiculous because in boss battle you are guaranteed to be able to stack up this to the fullest so this is really strong this also makes it really strong when you have this um pair this up with this trigger skill because this is not just when you do the attack yourself but also when you have triggered this attack on all of the enemies now i'm not sure if you hit all five enemies whether that only gives you one stack or five stack but regardless, this is something that can potentially be triggered every three seconds. On top of that, you're also doing all of the attacks yourself. It's actually quite easy for you to build up all of your different stacks through your passive. So this is also why, you know, Goku Sayer is really strong. Um, if you are able to have a team which can kind of help to preserve him toward, and uh, make sure once again, it's a long lasting battle because Goku Sayer will definitely get stronger as the battle goes up. All right, now let's move on to his close. Uh, first one is nice. Um, he retained the attacking speed bonus even after the duel ends. Um, now he can get a hundred percent attack speed increase during the duel. He will retain fifty percent of that. So basically, throughout this entire battle, he would get fifty percent increased attacking speed. So that's already crazy by itself, and that's only level one of the close. Level ten of the close. Upon activating Knight of Hope, he takes 50% less damage for 3 seconds. Now I hope this is this trigger skill, which can potentially be, uh, which have a 50% trigger rate per 3 seconds. So now if you think about that, you are immune to damage for 3 seconds, and this can be triggered per 3 seconds. So if you're actually lucky, you can get a constant damage reduction throughout the, this entire battle, which is crazy. Now obviously, this has a trigger rate of 50%. So I guess you can more think of the 50% of the time Goku say is going to get 50% damage reduction built in. So once again, absolutely crazy. And that's only level 10. Now level 20, reduce the interval of Night of Hope to 2 seconds. Now this is a 3 second cooldown to 2 second cooldown, which on paper is like a 33% reduction. So once again, absolutely crazy. Now if you put this on top of this, the fact that he can take 50% less damage after activating that, now basically you're going to make your probability of having this built-in damage reduction a lot higher before it was only 50 percent of the time but now because the cooldown has been reduced is this is going to be more like effective to like 75 percent of the time you're going to have a built-in 50 percent damage reduction straight away so once again really strong and that's only level 20. level 30 absolutely crazy once again any damage he takes is going to be capped at 10% of max HP, and this can be activated once every 3 seconds as well. And basically, this is to prevent himself to uh, getting hit by any kind of 
really explosive attacks. So let's say your Sagittarius Aurus, who have the potential chance to one shot any enemies, this can basically prevent you from being one shot and that kind of thing. It may not sound very good on paper, however, what this is seriously going to help you to do is because any damage is going to be capped to 10% max HP. This is going to for sure make him survive a lot longer. In a very similar way to why Sagittarius Aurus is going to be able to survive a lot longer. Um, and because he's able to survive a lot longer, this is going to allow your uh, passive to be able to stack up and therefore he hits a lot harder, etc. So this is very good. It's going to get even better when you then consider his constellation. Uh, at the 3 out of 9, it's already crazy because all of his attack generates 300 extra cost more, so that's already good. His ultimate hurts a lot, remember I did say that, like 800% damage scaling, one of the best ultimate in the game. So this is very strong already, 3 out of 9. 9 out of 9 is even crazier. You get 50% extra hit, but also 50% extra, uh, extra life drain on all of your attacks. Now, if you place this in conjunction with the fact that he can only take maximum 10% of damage at one point in three seconds, and now you're also able to get life drain on top of that, this is actually what's going to make him super, super bulky. And that's why I think, you know, the constellation and close work really well together for you to be able to, um, you know, survive a lot longer. And as he survives longer, he's going to get all those attacking buffs, and he's just going to become really deadly as the battle goes on. Now, a liar wise, um, you normally so. I already mentioned you want to you first of all take advantage of the fact that he's able to do certain effects with his normal attack. So definitely try to equip at least one of those. Uh, Demon Rose with the Bleeding One, with the Flame One, etc. You can also potentially equip this one, with the Fist of Light, or maybe this one, the uh, Excalibur of Judgment, which can lower enemy's attack. Uh, or otherwise, the other alliance you normally know, want to do is more speed focus. So for myself, I have, for example, Ferocious Fire, Fastest Wind, this attacking speed one. All of this will increase how often he attack. The more often he attack, the more quickly he's able to inflict his normal attack buffs, the more quickly he's able to charge out his Cosmo for his really strong ultimate, and the more often he's able to regain his health back through his constellation because he had this built-in life drain. So attacking speed is really important for God Close Sayer, and that's why your alliance should normally be focused on kind of speed base and also at the same time some of the normal attack effect base. So that's normally what I would recommend in terms of his um, a liar, and uh, in terms of his artifacts, um, like I said, golden tofu. I think I think that's the one which basically have additional effects for normal attack. That's normally going to be quite good. Uh, the same with that one is that you need it at a high level, you know, to unlock those additional effects. So until you unlock it at a high level, uh, normally what you can do is just equip him with the um. Warriors exclusive artifact, I think it's like Hades Sword or something like that, which is also quite good because I think that increased attacking speed and also life drain as well. So once again, it goes quite well and synergizes quite well with God Close Alright, Alright, um, and obviously you have to like, uh, try to get his exclusive if you can. It has quite a few good uh, stuff because, for example, increase his attacking speed, attacking damage, crit damage, and also hit rate. So all of this can help you to get your life back through life drain, help you to hit more, hit quicker, etc. So all can make sense. And like I said, Hades Sword, this one give attack boost, attacking speed boost, and also leech. So this is normally a really good one um, until you get um, you know your golden tofu up to a high level. So this is normally the best artifact to go with. Now, verdict on whether this character is worth it or not. Like I said, uh, I'm going to be completely honest with you. He disappointed me in PvP so far. It may be because my expectations were too high, or maybe I'm ju I just haven't found the right way of playing him properly yet. Uh, so for that reason, um, do not expect him to perform very, very well in PvP, if that's the only reason why you want to go for him. But overall, as a character, uh, he do ridiculous a high amount of boss damage. Like if you have him, you're kind of guaranteed a top spot in boss battle. So you can definitely get him for that reason. In PVE, he's also very flexible. 
um, with the fact that he's able to interrupt opening skill, which is always very useful when you need to fill in multiple teams, and you always, for example, want to let's say interrupt one of the opponents. Uh, enemies opening skill etc so he's also i think very useful like not essential for story map but i think very very useful in terms of like utility and also very versatile because of what he's able to bring uh so yeah so overall i i would still recommend anyone to get that um i, I do have it up front like his pvp performance may not be as good as you think purely because of the meta right now on how there's like go close the scene everywhere etc and also like aphrodite like if you actually play Saya up against aphrodite Saya is gonna lose that duel because uh Saya is gonna attack a lot faster against the aphrodite what basically that actually means is that you're gonna build up uh, you're gonna get inflicted poison stacked a lot faster as well because you're hitting at twice the speed so therefore you'll get poison twice as fast due to Aphrodite's passive so in the meta right now like Go Sayer is not gonna um, be doing very well let's be honest in PvP maybe there are better ways to do it I still need to test them out but right now it doesn't seem like he's gonna be meta changing in PvP however like I said because of this versatility of how he can you know essentially uh, have good synergy with the poison team have good synergy with the flame team have good synergy with the bleed team like all of those stuff he's able to do I still think like Go Close Sayer is very, very versatile. And for that reason, it's probably going to be one of those characters that you will never be able to truly replace completely for his versatility. And so, so yeah, so overall, I think like, you know, he may disappoint you in PvP, but he's still going to be a very, very good character for you to get right now.